Hi everyone, welcome back to the Power of a Hobby. I'm your host, Don Fenton, and today I'm joined by my next guest. Hi Jenny, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, Dom. Delighted to be here. Thank you for coming on the show. So, Jenny, for those who are listening or watching on YouTube and don't know who you are, why do you introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Jenny. I'm the Brilliance Coach at Genuine Consulting, and we are a people development company. So we specialise in helping people reclaim their unique brilliance all of those soft skills I don't call them soft skills because I think they're core skills um, that help people um, complete their potential live up to their potential that's what life's about you have to, you need to be living up to your potential and making the most of our one life that we get so absolutely I'm so excited to have you on here so just so everyone knows, I haven't really, I've told Jenny a little bit about how we work, but, so I'm going to be finding out the hobby exactly the same time as people tonight. So Jenny, the first question I ask all my guests, what does the power of a hobby mean to you? I think it means oh, so many things. Um, I think it's, um, it's, a, uh, it's something that keeps you grounded. Um, it's something that encapsulates your spirit uh, and it's something that brings you mostly um, joy um, with a bit of frustration because um, we're being real here, aren't we? Um, we are. A bit being of frustration. Very real. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes things don't quite work out how you how you thought they were going to be so but the the overarching thing is it's something that you love doing um um and that it do you know it gets you through the tough times completely agree completely agree on that and and again i think that's obviously the first time i've asked you that question didn't tell you what the question was beforehand and and i think actually what the big bit that gets me is that every time i ask you almost see people light up because it's not the easiest question, but it makes you think. Wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. And, <laughs> and that's part of the reason we do that because actually the the reason behind, um, I don't think I've ever said actually on, on any of the podcasts, the reason that we call it the Power of a Hobby podcast is that I, I do a talk around the Power of a Hobby and how a hobby, my obviously my hobby, rugby, is how it saved my life. So I think actually a hobby can be really, really powerful. Um, and obviously we talk about identity a lot, and we talk about it's it's about who we are and brings us joy. It certainly brings us frustration. I I completely agree agree with that. And I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of hobbies that we can do that yes bring us joy, but on that other side of it, they do bring us frustration because actually it might be that. We don't do it as well as we want to, or we might have had a bad moment. But actually, we always go back to it. Mm -hmm. So there's something in it, isn't there? Absolutely, yeah. So, Jenny, now is the moment. So do you now want to tell myself and everyone tuning in what your hobby is? So I'm a baker. Love it. And I was a baker long before Bake Off and long before baking really became a thing. Um, so I've, because I'm quite old, I'm oh, proud of it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been doing it for a long, long time. Love it. Uh, and, and to be fair, I wasn't expecting that. You weren't expecting the question. I was. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting baking. Don't talk to me. Now, now we've got that. How did you start? When did you start? Talk, talk to me about the history of Jenny and Bacon. Um, I started probably when I was a little girl um, with my, you know, making biscuits. And I remember making probably quite hideous peppermint creams. Um, and, you know, when you were little for brownies and things like that. So I did I did those kind of things um, when I was little. And then um, I started um, 
nurse training when I was 18 and went to London and um, we uh, we moved out into a, a, our first year was in, you know, nurses accommodation. Yeah. I trained at Great Ormond Street Hospital for sick children and we uh, we moved out into a house, a, a small gang of us, six of us. Um, and um, we needed recipes. We started, you know, bake. we started making stuff. Um, there's the everyday kind of cooking that you have to do to eat. And then there's the kind of, you know, when you've had a really hard day or you've had a tough day, there were some tough days um, and you just want a cup of tea and something, something tasty, something comforting. Um, and so I started, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have much equipment. Um, um, so we needed to have things, biscuits that you could make, you know, with, with no measuring, very little measuring. Um, and, uh, we had a baking sheet and a bit of a dodgy oven. So it needed to be something, um, that was, that was, was fairly, you know, foolproof, um, and oven proof and everything else proof. Um, and I used to make these these oat and raisin biscuits and they just used to smell divine um, and I'd have them on the windowsill while they were cooling down. Um, and literally before they cooled, they'd, they'd always gone. People had come past and go, oh, they look nice. Um, um, and of course, what I realized is very quickly that um, when you when you get when you share things with people, there's that instant connection. There's that conversations get started. There's a have a cup of tea and a chat, have a biscuit, all these nice bits. Um, so that that I'm a natural connector, um, um, and I love people, which is kind of why I do what I do. Um, but that that baking um, is a real connection with people. It gets people talking um, either because they'll say, oh, these taste like my mum my used to make these or my granny used to make these or, and all of a sudden the stories start to come out. Um, and there's a, there's a real kind of sense of, yeah, um, connection and love. Yeah. I, I it's, it's a nice thing, even when you, first of all, when you mentioned like the peppermint parts that you did as a child, is that you go straight back to childhood, you go straight back to, brownies or cubs or which, whichever organization you end up joining and it, it does it just completely takes you back and i must admit one of the one of the things that i always think about is that connection and actually i never thought of it like that because actually by baking you can be quite a lot of the time they'll bake on their own yeah you'll try and get kids involved and, and stuff growing up but obviously it can be quite a I always thought in some ways that might be quite an isolating thing but obviously not no and I you know one of the things that so um lockdown <laughs> um I was really lucky because um we have a local egg company here who couldn't sell eggs to coffee shops and restaurants because everything was closed so they set up um, a local delivery service for people, um, for, for ordinary, you know, domestic customers. So we had plenty of organic eggs. So um, I wasn't great at lockdown. I'm an extrovert. So being inside was quite hard for me. And I live by myself. So that was quite hard. Um, um, there was a finite amount of time you were allowed to walk outside, a finite amount of time that you could do stuff. So I used to bake. And... Um, baking um had twofold one was that um every thursday when we used to go outside and and clap for the nhs i used to put my baking in little bags and for anybody who was outside i had a tray and i used to take it to people so that they could because i couldn't eat it all um um so i used to take it to people um and it was just that thing again that connection um, when we when we were losing connection, and I remember one time I was um, doing a, a FaceTime call with a with a friend from New Zealand, and I was making scones at the time, and I said to her, "Do you mind if I like? Do you mind if we can chat? But do you mind if I carry on?" Um, and she said, "Do you know?" She said, "I'm just instantly transported to your kitchen in Scotland when we first met." 
and I used to come down and we used to sit at your kitchen table and you'd make scones and we'd put the worlds to rights and we'd chat while you were making, you know, while you were baking um, and then you put them in the oven and we'd have tea and we'd, we'd eat them. Um, and she said, I'm on the other side of the world. We're in lockdown. And yet I feel like um, we're really together because you're doing what I always associate you doing. Uh, and it's as if we're in the same space, even though we're not. Um, and I've never forgotten that. It was such a precious moment in time because it was tough, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, lo I love that. And I think the fact that we can connect over those sort of things and, and even the the way technologies move forward now and and even even to the point of doing these podcasts you know and the fact is that i'm very lockdown was tough but i'm very grateful we had it in a way because actually it's completely opened up another world and probably the first time i ever thought about doing a podcast because actually it, it just gives you the opportunity to talk to people like we are now. And yeah, it, and you, and as you say, you know, you find out things, don't you, um, when you're having these conversations um, about what people like, what they don't. Um, you know, they'll go, oh, I could never eat marzipan. Um, you know, I've had so many people go, oh, I don't like this. And I say, well, actually, that's what you're eating. Really? <laughs> oh, actually, I've never tried it before. Um yeah. You know, so sometimes, yeah, it's uh, and it's and you can you can do it together. You know, you can. Um, um, I did a um, a, a baking workshop with a friend of mine who runs who runs them. Um, and again, in lockdown, um, you know, we got all the ingredients together. Um, I'd always wanted to learn how to make oat cakes. Um, <clears throat> and she said, "Oh, I can show you." And we got a few of us. She's in Scotland. I'm in Oxford. There's other people around the world. Um, and we were all sitting there chatting with a glass of wine, learning how to make oat cakes. Um, and th that wouldn't have been possible. We wouldn't have thought about doing that if, if you know, if if we hadn't been locked in, would we? It's Yeah, and it's crazy because technology is there. You know, I hmm. remember probably years ago doing doing some online conversation with people, but it just became so much of a forefront now through that through that time that actually we need to keep connected so we'll talk to you about any stories you have through but i love i love that story with with new zealand any you know what are your sort of your worst worst disasters your biggest disasters <laughs> Some of you you. oh come on we'll go down that route my worst disaster um I'm not well. Obviously, I've done all of those things. The sunken, you know, sunken cakes when you take them out, and they look fabulous when you take them out of the oven, and then you come back ten minutes later, and they they've sunk. Um, I uh, my youngest my youngest son and his wife were due to get married. Um, what turned out to be the 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 weekend of lock the first lockdown. So I had been up there the previous week making wedding cake which of course we didn't get to have because of lockdown. Um, so they they were allowed to get married. We were allowed five people in church um, and they shut the door behind us and then we had to go home. Um, so there was no wedding reception, no nothing. Um, and we so we, we had a lot of cake, not much else in the house, but we had a lot of cake. Um, <laughs> And then I did it all again um, last March um, because they we were able to do it again. Um, so they uh, they had a their wedding reception uh, again. So I had to do the whole thing again, um, exactly the same as we'd done it the first time. Um, so that was fabulous. Um, a good story. I think another thing would be um, I was once asked to do a talk for school. I do some talk mentoring talks for schools, um, and the the uh, person who was organizing it asked me for my slides and I said oh, I haven't got any slides I haven't got any slides um but I would like a table and um I brought my cooking ingredients um with me um and I did my talk was about was about baking and I said you know why why I believe that everybody's born brilliant we all have that we all have that brilliance inside of us so why would you bother coming to school and all the teachers 
a, a, a twitching a bit thinking, oh my God, we've let this maverick woman talk to our children. Um, and I said, well, of course, I've got all the ingredients for a cake here, um, but have I got the cake? No, I haven't. Um, so actually what I need to learn how to do is I need to learn, I need to understand what each part, each ingredient does and, and to put them in the correct proportion to make whatever it is I want to make. Because basically the things that you use in baking are more or less the same. You've got eggs, you've got flour, you've got sugar. Um, so actually you've got the same broad ingredients, but you've got 900 million different recipes depending on the proportion. And it's the same with people is that we have different proportions of strengths um, in us as people um, and so actually what we come to school to learn um, is how to use those strengths that we have um, and put them to best use um, and when to kind of you know when we need a pinch of something um, and when we need a lot um, and sometimes ideas um, recipes need 10 minutes in the oven sometimes it's long slow you know long slow cooking um, so actually, that's why we come to school uh, to learn how to do this. Um, but actually, there's also there's room for experiment, uh, you know, experimenting and artistry and creativity. So although we've got the same ingredients, all of us are different. Um, so there was there was a collective sigh of relief from the teachers at the end <laughs> I that I had completely <laughs> dissed, um, dissed the education system completely. Um, but I think it was that the kids loved it because um, then we were asking them about, you know, what's your favourite cake? Um, do you make it? Um, who do you eat it with? Um, why do you like it? What do you love about it? Um, so that real engagement. And, and they... they um, a, they got the metaphor, which is always handy, isn't it? Um, and B, um, it was a real, you know, that whole thing about even when you've got the recipe, uh, you think you've got it made, but oh, hang on a minute. Well, there's, then you have to work out about the oven and the right size tin and the temperature of the oven and how long to cook it. So actually life can be quite complicated um, and some, we don't have to do it by ourselves. That's why we've got books because it helps us learn. And that's why we've got people on the telly who show us how to do it, because we all learn differently. Um, and so um, it's great to have, it's great to have a hobby um, that also I can, every now and then I can sneak into, I can sneak into my business. And also when you're doing a workshop, sometimes, you know, you're doing a workshop and people are a bit tired or they're busy, um, and I go and say, you know, I'm your facilitator for today. We're going to do this course. And I just happen to have with me, um, you know, um, a bag full of brownies or a bag full of whatever. Or do you fancy cake with coffee? Um, you know, and it again, it just that brings people together. It's fun. Oh, I love that. And I, and I can imagine I can imagine being in that hall as, as someone who works with schools and in education himself. I can imagine exactly what there must be a pin drop. <laughs> you must be able to hear a pin drop when you started at that moment. <laughs> I think there was a sharp intake of breath. <sighs> yeah, but oh no, what is going to happen? But I love, I love that. I love the metaphor. I love how it looks. So, with your, is it something? Obviously, you 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 spoke about at the beginning, sort of brownies and and that side. Is it something that your family have been involved with? Is there is there a baking history or cooking or things like that? My my grandma um went to, she left school at 13 and she went into service like they did in those yeah. days. Um and she was a kitchen maid and um she was a very wise woman, my grandma, and she was just a beautiful, she was a beautiful baker. And of course, um, you know, she lived through she lived through the wars, uh, and so she learned to make things with nothing. Um, and when you know things were rationed and you couldn't, uh, so she was she was just fabulous. Um, and she, I still have it. She has a, a recipe book. Uh, well, it was a notebook 
uh, that she had in service when she was 13 and all these recipes that the cook had instructed her. So she'd written them down um, in this beautiful copper plate wow. uh, writing. She'd written them down. Um, uh, and and I guess she instilled in me a love of, um, yeah, it was that together time when we used to spend time together um, and she'd be excited about, oh, I've, you know, I've made jam. She used to do things like, oh, also not just baking, but, you know, she'd um, boil ham and ox tongue and all sorts of stuff that you would never imagine doing now um, and tell stories about, you know, when eggs, eggs were seasonal. Um, we didn't have eggs all the year round, whereas all the things that we take for granted now. Um, and I think you only have to look at programmes like Bake Off that have just taken off because they're a great leveller, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not gender specific. It's not age specific. Um, anybody, anybody can have a go. And that's what I love about it. It's an incredibly um, inclusive hobby. Um um, you you just need to have a go, um, and and that sense of community. And I say sometimes it goes wrong. Um, your know, oven temperature is not right, or you've burnt the edges, or you misread the recipe. I, I actually I have one more story um, where I was making doing a friend's tea party for her fiftieth birthday. Um, and she asked me for brownies and I cooked, I mean, I've done it millions of times before, cooked the brownie and it came out and it just was wrong. And I thought maybe it's because I've doubled the recipe um, and I did it again and it was still wrong. And I changed the tin and I did it again and it was still wrong. Um, and I said to my dad, who was there at the time, I need you to go to the shop to get me more ingredients because I've run out of sugar and I've run out of butter and I've run out of chocolate and I've run out of, and he said, well, have you run out of eggs? And I said, eggs? Um, I said, no, you know, it's really weird. There's no eggs in this recipe. And he said, are you sure? And I said, oh, yeah, I've read the recipe really carefully. So I had repeated the recipe four times. And on each successive occasion, I had completely missed the eggs. So that's why they didn't work, because there was no eggs in them. Um, and I looked at, and I said, no, I've read the recipe really carefully. There are no eggs. And he read the recipe and he went, it says six eggs here. And I was like, oh, that'll be, <laughs> yeah, maybe why it's that'll not be the reason. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the tin or the t oven temperature or anything else. It's the fact that I missed out a crucial ingredient. Yeah, um, they, they play quite a I big forgot. part in that, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Oops, I've forgotten about that. Um, um, I'd obviously blanked it out. So, yeah. Sorry about, um, sorry about this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> stop. Um, but I think, you know, that overarching, it's a... Uh, and if I'm ever feeling a bit down, a bit fed up, uh, and I think, oh, I know, you know, I'll make a cake. Um, and just that, just that, the process, the stirring, the beating, the measuring, it it just, it that process of doing it, of creating, um, just kind of calms your, you know, calms any anxiety and raises your spirit. And then when it comes out of the oven um, and it just looks amazing, and then you can, um, you know, you can share it with somebody. Um, um, it's it's just fabulous. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, baking for raising fund fundraising. Um, again, it's that connection. Um, you can I don't think anybody has ever, if I've offered to do something, baking, nobody has ever yet said, no, thanks. We don't we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I just, I, I love, I love the stories. I, I love the fact that actually, again, it's how it makes you feel. Mm. And I think that's something for anyone listening. Uh, no matter what, no matter what hobby, we do it because generally it's how it makes us feel. Absolutely. Whatever, whatever we do, as long as it's got a positive impact on our lives yes there's as we said there's going to be moments of frustration but they completely they're completely outweighed by all the other positive emotions we get through what we do and I, I love this just to wrap up before we do wrap up um and again this is a question i ask all the guests if someone came to you and said 
I want to do something, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I don't have a hobby, but I really know I need to get one because actually they're listening to these and going, oh, actually, maybe I do need to do something. What would you say to them? I would say um, try a few. Try a few things. Um, um, talk to people who you, you know, who you who you know and love um, and go along. Have a go um, and see um, because it might take you um, quite a lot. I've I have I've tried loads of different hobbies. Some of them I've kept up with, you know, and when you first asked me, I thought, oh, can I narrow it down to one? And then I thought, actually, um, the reason I chose the baking is because it's the one that's lasted the longest. Um, and I always go back to it. Um, so I might do other things uh, and I love reading and I, you know, um, I like this and I like that. I like flower, you know, I love working with flowers, um, but actually it's the baking that's most consistent. Um, so I would say if you want, if you want to find a hobby, um, have a go, try them out. Because sometimes you try them um, and you think, oh, no, that's not for me. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, I've, I've done a few of them. <laughs> and you learn as much from that, don't you? Yeah. So have a go. Um, go with somebody. You know, if you can find somebody to go with you um, so that you don't feel such a twit when you first start, because it can be a bit overwhelming, can't it, when you go yeah. the first time you go to um, rugby or the first time you try netball or the first yeah. time you go to do archery or whatever it is you fancy, um, it can be a bit overwhelming. So take somebody with you, but have a go. Um yeah. And try as many till you find one that you think, oh, actually, I really enjoyed that. Um, and like you said, how does it make you feel? You don't have to be good at it. If it makes you feel fabulous and you really enjoy doing it, carry on. Yeah, love that. Um, I, I've, I've such, so enjoyed this chat, Jenny. Where can if if people where can people find you on social media or if they want to get in touch, where could they where could they find you? They can find me on LinkedIn. They can find me on Facebook. I'm occasionally seen marauding on Instagram. Oh. I'm going to do more of that. Um, um, and I have a website, um, which is just um, www.genuineconsulting.com. Um, and all my contact, my phone number and stuff's on there. Um, if they're in Oxfordshire, um, come and see me. Um, we'll have Kate. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's going to feel hungry after this now. <laughs> and, we'll, and what we'll do, Jenny, we'll get you to send all your uh, all your links to us anyway. And we can do that when we send this out. But thank you so much for uh, for coming on the show and having a chat with me. Hope that hasn't been too daunting. It's been an absolute. I knew it would be. It's an absolute <laughs> pleasure, Dom. It's always fabulous to talk with you. Um, um I love our conversations and. Um, uh, just keep up the good work because these are fabulous so thank you so much for having me um, I've loved every minute amazing thank you thanks for everyone for tuning in uh, and I will see you again on our next show of the power of a hobby take care now bye bye <laughs>